season of hope for the future of world trade. The two countries have been at each other's throats for years, but now they're hatchets being buried by a treaty which allows unrestricted trading between all parties at all levels. I'm joined now by Martin Crace, the British Minister with special responsibility for the Commonwealth, and Gavin Hawtrey, the Australian Foreign Secretary in Canberra. Gentlemen, this is pretty historic stuff, well done. A future of unbridled harmony then, Australia? Yes, I think uh, Martin Crace and I can be uh, pretty satisfied. It's uh, a good one. As in the past, Australia exceed their agreement. What can you do about it? This is very satisfactory. I'm sure we'll work as well. Actually, if the limits were exceeded, then this would be left with a firm line. But I can't see this. Mr. Hotchie, he's not getting a firm line in your direction. What are you going to do about that? Well, in that case, we just reimpose sanctions as we did last year. Sanctions? Hang on a second. They only just swallowed their sanctions, and now they're bluffing them back up in your face. I think sanctions is, is rather premature talk. So the sanctions are imposed, we should, uh, we should have to retaliate with appropriate measures. But I think appropriate measures is a uh, euphemism, Mr. Hawtrey. You know what it means. What are you going to do about that? Oh, I just have to go back to Cabinet. And ask them about what? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's a matter for the military. The military? I, I, I think military measures is a totally inappropriate reaction, and I think this is way, way too much. Oh, you're being inappropriate, are you? No, I'm not being inappropriate, but Martin Pace knows that pretty well. This is the sort of misunderstanding that I thought would lay to rest during our negotiation. This understanding it certainly is. It's certainly not a treaty, is it? You're both at each other's throats, you're backing yourselves up with arms. What are you going to do about it? Mr. Hawtrey, let me give you a hint. Why? What are you asking me to say? You know damn well what I'm asking you to say. You're putting yourself in a situation of armed conflict. What are you plunging yourself into? You like me to say it? I want you to say it, yes. You want the word? The word! I will not flinch. You will not flinch from war. War. Gentlemen, I'll put you on hold. If fighting did break out, it would probably occur in Eastman's time in the upper cataract on the Australia and Hong Kong border. Our reporters on the Bethlehem is there now. Donald, what's the atmosphere like? Tension here is very high, Chris. The stretched twig of peace is at melting point. People here are literally bursting with war. This is very much a country that's going to blow up in its face. Well, gentlemen, it seems we have little option now but to declare war immediately. But this is quite impossible. I couldn't take such a decision without referring to myself from your perspective. It isn't Hong Kong. Good, because he's on the line now by a satellite, Mr. Patton. What do you think of the idea of a war now? I'll take that as a yes. Very well, it's war. Where it is. That's it, Chris. It's war. Oh, I've spoken up. This is war. That's it. Yes, it's war. The day today will be providing us the media coverage of any war ever fought. On the front line that you'll face, the little Bethlehem is being defied. The day to day smartphones have nose mounted cameras. This is Martin Stephen, and that is Susanna Gekloys. Are they reporting from inside the fight? Like some crazy Trojan. They're keeping an eye on everything that's going on out there, but the day to day news pipe, Douglas Trotts. Chris, what's the weather from Sylvester Stewart? And now the weather is starting in the southeast. When the sun should pop through after a dark start, a bit like having a cancer back on the
resist the noise, the damage by the weather, from the side.
a fish rots from the head first. Alleluia, O Marcos, O Margaret, O Ronnie, O Allah, who sing you, O George, and the Easter, San Salvador. Thank <laughs> you. 